Um, and uh, we will move for our next point of the agenda. It's point 16. It's a debate on the European Commission priorities for 2023, focusing especially on the EU energy platform, critical raw materials, EU-UK relations. I would like particularly to welcome our guest speaker, Maro Sefkovic, Vice President of the European Commissioner for Interinstitutional Relations and Foresight. Let me thank you so much for accepting our invitation to be here today at the Committee of the Regions Plenary Session, and especially for taking the time in such a busy day to share with us your thoughts and your insights about the European Commission's priorities. Mr. So Vice President, I will give you the floor for 10 minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. President, uh, honorable members of the Committee of the Region. It is indeed a pleasure uh, to be here, especially in such a, a busy day as we have uh, this Thursday. And I think it just reflects uh, these new dynamics uh, which we have uh, across the Europe and especially in, uh, in Brussels. Uh, of, co of course, for me, it's a pleasure to have opportunity to address you again because your cities and regions have an important role to play as Europe faces a year which is uh, turning out to be every bit as challenging as the last year, every bit as complicated as 2022. And our political priorities for 2023 are clear. I mean, we have to address the impacts of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, including the energy crisis, energy sec uh, security, the, uh, the uh, cost of living uh, crisis as well. And of course, we have to focus as much as we can on the competitiveness of our companies and uh, on attracting strategic investments uh, to the European Union. And we want to do it in our European way, meaning driving forward the twin green and digital transitions. Before I would move on uh, into some of these issues, I really would like uh, to thank you, Mr. President, and your committee for your broad support for 2023 Commission uh, work program. Uh, my colleagues uh, in the college, me personally, and our, our services very much appreciated uh, the resolution we adopted in December, uh, which provides very welcome input uh, from the perspective of uh, regional and local authorities on the key challenges and actions uh, for the year ahead. So thank you very much for that. To start with Ukraine, uh, it was a great pleasure for me to visit uh, Kiev uh, last week together with my uh, fellow uh, commissioners. Not always you have uh, that opportunity and feeling that you are touching history. We clearly had that feeling last week where we had the first historic meeting between the Ukrainian government and the College of Commissioners. And I have to say that our Ukrainian colleagues spent with us the whole day despite the fact that they are fighting the atrocious war in the east uh, of the country. As you know, this uh, first, first of its kind meeting between the government and the College of uh, uh, Commissioners was followed up by the EU-Ukrainian uh, uh, summit. And with Russia's invasion nearing its first anniversary, today's uh, European Council will be another opportunity to reiterate our rock-solid support for Ukraine, which will last as long as it takes. And you know that uh, in a few moments, the President of Ukraine uh, uh, Volodymyr Zelensky will be addressing the, the European Parliament in this building uh, 
And uh, later on, he will also have a chance to participate in the European Council, where our heads of states and government are regularly meeting. I think that uh, this just proves that Europe indeed plays a very important role in helping Ukrainians to defend uh, uh, themselves. So far, the EU and our member states and the European financial institutions uh, have made around uh, 50 billion euros available to Ukraine. And this includes 18 billion uh, euros of uh, microfinancial assistance uh, instrument combining balance of payment support with funding for uh, repair of damaged infrastructure and also reform agenda geared towards supporting Ukraine in its European path. It is intended uh, for that path to ultimately lead uh, uh, to the EU membership uh, for Ukraine. And I know, Mr. President, uh, that the cities and regions have played a huge and crucial role in these efforts, especially in taking in, ta in, taking in the millions of refugees fleeing the violence. And I know when the war abruptly started that, uh, that were you, the mayors, the regional governors uh, who opened the schools, who opened the cultural centers, who opened the, the sport halls to accommodate uh, the refugees fleeing from the horrors of the war. And the fact that until today we have uh, 4 million registered refugees uh, in the European Union and the fact uh, that, we, that we managed the wave uh, was uh, uh, thanks to your efforts, thanks to the open hearts of the European citizens who just wanted to help uh, and did it in this sincere, open manner. And um, uh, it's very difficult uh, to describe how much this is appreciated uh, by Ukrainian government, by Ukrainians, but also by all of us here uh, in the EU institutions because we know what kind of challenge uh, it was. And I think that with uh, those thoughts on our minds, we also have to think about uh, the future. So we are turning our thinking to the reconstruction where, where the EU is committed uh, to playing a major role as Ukraine think, seeks uh, to build back better. Here, of course, I welcome the European Alliance of Cities and Regions for Reconstruction of uh, Ukraine, which this committee launched together uh, with its partners already in June 2022 to coordinate your work uh, in this regard. At the same time, we continue our efforts to reduce Russia's ability to wage war and are preparing the 10th package of uh, sanctions with the aim of having them in place uh, in the coming days. If you allow me to turn to energy crisis, we are boosting our efforts uh, to reduce our independence uh, from Russia fossil fuels under our Repower EU plan. And we want to do it by diversifying our supplies. Uh, we want to become more energy efficient, and we are accelerating our clean energy transition. We are currently working hard on organizing for the first time ever the joint purchasing of uh, gas for Europe under the EU uh, energy platform. You've probably been informed that uh, uh, President of the European uh, Commission uh, uh, asked me to lead the effort in this regard, uh, and uh, therefore I will be in uh, close contact uh, with you, with your government, uh, with energy sectors in your countries, because we have to make uh, the best out of this opportunity for the first time in the history of EU to purchase uh, gas uh, uh, together. We should do it uh, because it will help us to leverage the political and market weight of Europe. It would reduce the risk of our companies engaging in the bidding wars against each other, as we have seen last August, and it would also secure access to gas supplies at sustainable prices. Joint uh, purchasing will also send a strong signal of unity and underline our European ability to act together in the times of crisis. Our objective here is to have this tool ready by April to support the filling of the gas storages ahead uh, of the next uh, filling season. I was asking uh, your uh, prime ministers and ministers of uh, energy uh, to inform us these days what is the rough idea of every member state, uh, how much uh, gas, what is the volume you would like to purchase through this uh, common platform? Which are the companies, be it energy producer or energy consumers, uh, uh, which should be part of the consortium 
which we are trying to form on the European level. So far, I think we get uh, more concrete responses from 12 member states, but we'll be urging every one of them to respond to us and to uh, present us their concrete ideas. And if you can help us to transmit this message again, I would very much appreciate it. <coughs> Alongside this work, next month the Commission will set out its proposals for a longer-term targeted reform of the electricity market design. I mean, we are all suffering from very high uh, energy prices, uh, and we simply need to address and help uh, to mitigate uh, the effects of high uh, gas prices on electricity prices. We must also make increasing use of uh, renewables, mm -hmm. and of course, these have to be reflected in the price setting mechanism. So to this end, uh, we put uh, uh, forward the recommendation to speed up the permitting for major renewable energy projects, which is very often the main obstacle why we cannot have more renewables in our system. If you allow me a few words on overall European competitiveness. If we are to achieve our wider climate ambitions while making full use of the opportunities provided by international trade, it is imperative that we retain our global competitiveness and attract strategic investments into the European Union. At a time where others around the world are taking measures which could negatively affect these aims, we must also consider how to best support Europe's thriving clean tech um, uh, industry. For example, the US Inflation Reduction uh, Act, or as it's called, IRA, is said to have a negative impact on our clean tech uh, industry as it stands. And we still face unfair competition from China's massive subsidies uh, in its clean tech sector. In response, last week we put forward the Green Deal industrial plan working around four pillars. Developing a predictable and uh, as simplified as possible regulatory environment, including fast-track permitting for strategic projects. We want also to speed up access to finance including streamlined uh, state aid. <clears throat> we want to accelerate training, upskilling and reskilling uh, to reflect our rapidly changing labor market. And also we want to ensure open trade for resilient uh, supply chains. There is also the possibility to use around 250 billion uh, euros uh, uh, of Repower EU funding to benefit um, our net zero industries. For example, this could include member states using this money for the tax breaks. The message to the clean tech industry must be very clear. You belong in Europe where you will find all that you need to succeed. And I would even enlarge it. The message to the industry should be, we want you not only to stay, but to prosper in the European Union. Of course, to make sure that we would succeed in that effort, we would, improve, we would need to improve access to the critical raw materials, because absolutely key and necessary for clean technologies such as batteries, photovoltaic panels, and uh, windmill turbines. And these are the technologies that are enabling the twin transition. Put simply, without these materials, without these critical uh, uh, raw materials, uh, there is simply no green and digital future of Europe. And we have to be very serious about how to make sure that we would uh, increase uh, uh, our strategic autonomy if it comes to the access to the critical raw materials. As you know, right now Europe is heavily dependent on imports of uh, critical raw materials from small number of uh, third countries, which do not always share our values. For example, the EU currently supplies only 1% of its own needs for key battery raw materials such as lithium, cobalt, and nickel. In response, next month we will put forward the EU's Critical Raw Materials Act, and the Act uh, will support development of the full European value chain from extraction to recycling, meeting high environmental, societal, and governance standards, and working closely with the local communities. In parallel, we are seeking to diversify supply sources by working with like-minded countries such as Ukraine, Canada, or countries of Western Balkans. If you allow me to conclude on EU-UK relations. It remains our desire to have a positive and stable relationship uh, with the United Kingdom. We are partners on the global stage. We share the same values, 
and we, say, we, and we face the same challenges. In this context, we continue together uh, with the UK our intensive talks, uh, scoping for potential joint solutions related to the implementation of the protocol on Ireland, Northern Ireland. In this, the Commission and the UK government are working closely and constructively. Both sides agree that joint solutions are needed to respond to, to the real-life concerns of all communities in Northern Ireland. Process is being, uh, progress is being made, but several difficulties still remain. But while this is not an easy effort, the Commission will do everything in its power to agree a joint way forward. Finally, a few words on our work uh, with your committee. I very much welcome the commitment and active role of the Committee of uh, Regions and the Reg Hub Network in contributing to our better regulation agenda and the work of uh, the Fit for Future platform. In particular, I'm grateful for Reg Hub's input uh, to the Fit for Future platform, including its special report on 21st century rules for 21st century infrastructure. Finally, Reg Hub also contributed to the finalization of the 2023 annual work program of the platform that was adopted uh, on the 31st of January. And I know that I can count on your continued support for the work of the platform to ensure that it delivers to the benefit of citizens, businesses, and regional and local authorities. I will stop here because usually what is the most interesting and important in uh, these meetings is a discussion. So I'm very much looking forward to your questions and I'm ready to uh, answer your question. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. <clears throat> I now give the floor, we will start by the political groups. We now give the floor to member Yelena Drehanin for two minutes. Thank you, and dear uh, Vice President Sefcovic. Thank you for your personal and constant support to the local and regional authorities of the Committee of Regions. And I wish a similar display of recognition would come from the whole European Commission. In the European Union, 1.2 million local and regional leaders are in the front line of the daily basis to address the multiple crisis. President of Madrid region, Diaz Ayoso, reinforced the hospitals endowed during the COVID, becoming a reference hospital for the whole <coughs> European Union. Mayor of Clu, Naborska Emil Bok, introduced important measures to save energy in public buildings. In my municipality, Huddinge, we have tough requirements on climate neutral tenders. There are many more similar examples in the Committee of Regions on local and uh, regional barometer uh, and leaders helping citizens, families, and small and medium businesses. And yet, if you look at least State of the Union address, you would not find one single mention of the role played by mayors and regional leaders, because Europe can not exist in a vacuum. Europe needs regions and cities, and cities and regions, we also re need a recognition from Europe. And this is even more important given the EU elections approaching with a fast pace. We need mutual trust in order to secure the needed strong support for European policies starting in our cities and regions. So, dear Vice President, whilst the EU has given some tools to the local and regional authorities to achieve results, a more structured recognition should be granted. So let me uh, invite you to consider to adapt our cooperation agreement between European Commission and the European Commit uh, Committee in Regions accordingly, in order to better plan ahead coordinated actions between Brussels and European cities and regions in many policies. So thank you very much. Thank you, Member Michael Murphy. You have the floor for two minutes. Uh, thank you, uh, dear uh, Vice President. I'm very happy to take the floor on future EU-UK relations as COR Rapporteur on this important topic. Uh, we recently had the pleasure to meet in Westminster at the last meeting of the Parliamentary Partnership uh, Assembly. I know this week you spoke at the General Affairs Council and how the EU and UK are still trying to find common solutions to the protocol's implementation the integrity of the uh, single market and real life concerns of all communities. And here in the COR, that's what we're about, real life concerns and real life solutions. And on that front, uh, Vice President, we are your best ally. 
and the same is true for EU-UK uh, relations. I've said many times, and I want to highlight it again here today, that the narrative is different, different at the level of the devolved governments, local governments on both sides of the channel than the UK's national uh, government's narrative. And I again want to highlight some examples. The partnership between North Rhine-Westphalia and Greater Manchester in the area of uh, education and science. The participation of Kent uh, County Council in the Straits Committee involving six local authorities from four different countries in the area of education and business. The Vanguard Initiative, of which Wales is a leading member uh, in the area of innovation and regional smart specialisation strategies. Our studies, and I want to highlight the work of the COR UK contact group, show there, there is untapped potential for mutually beneficial cooperation in areas such as low carbon technologies, uh, environment, resource efficiency, climate mitigation practices, and EU UK subnational cooperation in relative international for, fora. Thank you, Vice President, and I look forward to your continued support. Thank you, Member Isolt Ries. You have the floor for four minutes. Yeah. Herr Präsident Cordero, Herr Kommissar Sefcovic, ich spreche für die SPD-Fraktion. Sie haben eben angesprochen, dass der Zugang zu kritischen Rohstoffen verbessert werden muss. Und ich freue mich, dass die Kommission Anfang März diesen Jahres ein umfangreiches Paket über kritische Rohstoffe vorlegen wird, gerade auch aus den negativen Erfahrungen in der Corona-Krise und äh, Ukraine-Krieg. Und Sie haben eben gesagt, Lithium, Kobalt, Nickel, da kann die EU nur ein Prozent des Eigenbedarfs decken. Das ist ja eigentlich erschreckend. Wirtschaftspolitisch betrachtet ist es deshalb ganz richtig und wichtig, dass wir uns als ADR noch mal mit der Widerstandsfähigkeit der EU bei kritischen Rohstoffen befassen. Moderne Volkswirtschaften mit langen Wertschöpfungsketten können ohne eine sichere, umweltverträgliche, wettbewerbsfähige Versorgung mit mineralischen und metallischen Rohstoffen nicht dauerhaft funktionieren. Die Versorgung mit kritischen Rohstoffen muss deshalb ganz breit gefächert aufgestellt werden. Und als EU-Ausschuss der Region hatten wir uns schon mal 2021 mit diesem Thema befasst. Ich durfte damals für den ADR die Berichterstattung übernehmen. Und wir haben damals betont, dass wir erst mal auf eine angemessene Rohstoffversorgung angewiesen sind. Dass wir die kritischen Rohstoffe ja nicht nur für erneuerbare Energien brauchen, sondern auch für Elektrofahrzeuge, für stationäre Stromspeicher, ebenso für Großanlagen, für Wasserelektrolyse zur Herstellung von grünem Wasserstoff, für Radiofrequenz, Mikrochips, für 5G und 6G-Funkmasten bis hin zu Wasserentsalzungsanlagen. Das heißt, die Abhängigkeit von kritischen Rohstoffen muss dringend reduziert werden. Und wie schaffen wir das? Die inländische Rohstoffgewinnung in der EU muss gestärkt werden. Und das ist kein einfaches Unterfangen, das wissen wir in gleichem Maße wie fossile Energieträger durch Wind- und Sonnenenergie ersetzt werden, werden viele neue Bergwerke für kritische Rohstoffe notwendig. Aber das müssen wir erst mal die Leute davon überzeugen, dass sie das auch wollen und mitmachen. Und bei der Beschaffung aus Drittländern müssen wir darauf achten, dass wir nicht nur von einem Land oder von wenigen Ländern abhängig sind. Bei all diesen Verfahren spielen wir als Städte und Regionen aufgrund unserer Expertise, der Genehmigungszuständigkeit sowie der Wertschöpfungs- und Beschaffungseffekte vor Ort eine grundlegende Rolle. Wichtig ist deshalb ein Maßnahmenpaket. Und da ist es mir ganz wichtig, dass wir ein Frühwarnsystem auflegen. Das war in dem alten Vorschlag noch nicht drin, dass wir eine Schwachstellenanalyse vornehmen, um ganz früh Korrekturmaßnahmen vorzunehmen. Und da kann auch das Notfallinstrument für den Binnenmarkt, das wir gestern hier beschlossen haben, eine ganz notwendige Hilfe sein. Und ganz wichtig ist mir auch, dass wir Vorräte brauchen und Produktionsstätten in Europa. Wir haben im Saarland, aus dem kleinsten Bundesland in Deutschland, aus dem ich komme, schmerzliche Erfahrungen machen müssen, als die Halbleiter fehlten und die gesamte Automobilindustrie ins Schwanken kam, Arbeitnehmerinnen in Kurzarbeit wurde, äh, mussten und nichts mehr ging. So etwas müssen wir in Zukunft verhindern. Und deshalb sind mir auch zwei Punkte ganz wichtig. 
Wir brauchen das Know-how aus den Bergbauindustrien. Wir haben zum Beispiel im Saarland eine Forschung zur Lithiumgewinnung aus Grubenwasser. Und es ist wichtig, dass wir aufklären und Akzeptanz einfordern, dass wir auch Bergwerke in Europa wieder aufmachen. Und über all dem steht natürlich auch die Finanzierung für die Bevorratung, für Investitionen in Minen, in Raffinerien, in Recyclingkapazitäten innerhalb und außerhalb der äh, Union. Und da wäre das Chipgesetz eine gute Anregung. Thank Dankeschön. You. Thank you. Now give the floor to members Gunnars and since you have the floor for three minutes. Microphone. Sorry. Bez enerģijas nav izmantošanas nav iedomājama neviena cilvēka dzīve. Ikvienai valstī ir būtiski stiprināt tās enerģētisko neatkarību, lai garantētu saviem pilsoņiem enerģijas pieejamību. Es personīgi uzskatu, ka Eiropa bez problēmām varētu dzīvot, samandzinot enerģijas patēriņu par vairāk kā 60%. Un es gribu teikt, ka tas nenozīmē atgriešanos viduslaikos pie vienas spuldzītes, kā tas bija kādreiz. Protams, objektīvi mēs redzam to, ka ir dažāda enerģijas patēriņa. Valstīm, kas atrodas karsta vai augsta klimata joslās, noteikti nepieciešams daudz vairāk resursu, komforta, iekštāpu temperatūras uzturēšanai. Ar to jārēķinās, mēs nevaram lineāri vienkārši samazināt par procentiem apgādi. Bet ko mēs varam darīt? Nu, piemēram, es dzīvoju Liepājas pilsētā, kas ir Latvija, Mēs sākām ar to, ka energoefektivitāte vispirms. Mēs nosiltinājām skolas, nosiltinājām slimnīcas un mācījām cilvēkiem aizvien vairāk topīt elektro- un enerģijas resursus. Tādā veidā samazinot kopējo energoresursu bāzi pilsētā. Mēs transformējām Liepājas pilsētas centrālu siltumu apgādi no gāzes jau pirms vairāk kā desmit gadiem. Šogad sastādot vairāk kā 80% vietējo produktu, kas ir šķelda. Tā ir vietējais produkts, kas nāk no Liepājas tuvākiem apgabaliem un kas ir daudzreiz lētāks un ekonomiski izdevījāks šodien. Bet tajā pašā laikā es gribētu vērst arī uzmanību uz to, ka katrai pilsētai un katram reģionam ir jādomā, kā mēs vairāk varam iegūt šo neatkarību, energoresursu neatkarību savu reģionu ietveros. Un es domāju, ka pilnīgi būtu nepieļājumi, ka piemēram šķeldai vai kādam citam kurinājumu veidam katrai valstī atsevišķi būtu pielietojams cits dabas resursu koeficents. Tā būtu kļūda, un tas neveicinātu energoefektivitātu un neveicinātu siltumu apgādi pilsētās kopumā. Tā ir mūsu pieredze, energoefektivitāte vispirms, un tad viss pareiz. Paldies, kungi un dāmas. Thank you. Now, members Aldrich Vlasak, two and a half minutes. Dear Commissioner, not only Czechia in the EU is facing one of the highest in your inflation connecting with energy crisis caused mainly by Russia's unjustified military aggression against Ukraine. EU is in a very difficult situation now, and all governments have undertaken many measures to mitigate the impacts of, on citizens and businesses. The Czech state will allocate about 10 billion euro in 2023 for various aid measures to households and companies, including energy subsidies, higher pensions and other welfare payments. When we look at the objective of building an energy union, it's based on security of supply sustainability and competitiveness. These can be achieved through developing the appropriate infrastructure, not applying a one-size-fits-all approach. All member states have to choose the most suitable energy mix that will enable them to meet climate goals and targets, as well as becoming independent. For example, in March 2022, Czechia notified the Commission of its plan to support the construction and operation of a new nuclear power plant in Dukovany, which is already the site of an existing nuclear power plant. The new plant will increase the security of electricity supply for Czechia and for neighboring countries, helping the decarbonization of the energy sector and diversifying the Czech energy mix. 
the inclusion of nuclear in the EU taxonomy will support European sources of nuclear energy and put us on equal footing with other parts of the world. Finally, let's have an energy transition that is socially sustainable. What we need are targeted actions to reduce energy poverty and not only exacerbate it. Thank you. Thank you. Member Karl von Loo, you have the floor for two minutes. Thank you, President. Meneer de vicevoorzitter, collega's, ik wil uiteraard vicevoorzitter Sefcovic heel uitdrukkelijk bedanken voor zijn aanwezigheid hier in ons comité van de regio's. Zoals gezegd, 2022, maar ook 2023 is een jaar van oorlog. Maar 2023 is vooral ook een jaar van steun en van solidariteit van inderdaad onze regio's, van de lidstaten, van de steden, voor onze Oekraïnse vrienden. En de oorlog in Oekraïne leerde ons opnieuw hoe afhankelijk de Europese Unie van derde landen is op het vlak van energie. En dat moet veranderen. Bevoorradingszekerheid is inderdaad een prioriteit. De omslag naar energieonafhankelijkheid moet dan ook duurzaam zijn. Naast de hernieuwbare energie, waar wij in Vlaanderen zeer veel in investeren, moeten we ook durven kijken naar de hernieuwde, vernieuwde nucleaire energie. Die betaalbaar, betrouwbaar en ook duurzaam is. Iets wat minder onder de aandacht komt op dit ogenblik, maar wat we de voorbije zomer hebben gezien, zijn de verschrikkelijke bosbranden en overstromingen. En ik nodig ook de Europese Commissie uit om te kijken hoe wij als Vlaamse regering uh, een blue deal hebben uitgewerkt. Minder inzetten op verharding, meer vernatting, maximaal circulair watergebruik. Hier hebben we 70 acties, 400 projecten, om ons te beschermen tegen waterschaarste en droogte via infrastructuurwerken, natte graslanden en verschillende opvangbekkens. En mijn final point is of course the EU-UK relationship. Three years ago, the UK finally left the European Union. Ever since, there have been disagreements about the Irish Protocol. And I'm interested to hear the Commission's views on a possible way to solve the conflict, keeping trade lines open and avoiding a hard border on the Irish conflict. Ten slotte wil ik u nog vragen op welke domeinen de samenwerking met het Verenigd Koninkrijk, onze buren en partners er zal zijn. We hebben de horizon samenwerking met de universiteiten, maar er is ook de macro-regio rond de Noordzee waar de lidstaten, regio's, samen met het Verenigd Koninkrijk kunnen samenwerken. Ik dank u. Member Josef Frey, you have the floor for two minutes. Ja, vielen Dank, Herr Präsident, sehr geehrter Vizepräsident. Äußere Bedrohungen müssen für die EU ein, eine einzige Antwort haben. Wir müssen in ganz Europa zusammenstehen, zusammenhalten, aber auch zusammenwachsen. Deshalb sollten wir heute einerseits über das Vereinigte Königreich, aber auch über unsere Beziehungen zur Schweiz weiter sprechen. Ich winke Ihnen mal zu, dass Sie mich sehen. Seit, denn seit dem Abbruch der Verhandlungen über das Rahmenabkommen mit der Schweiz sind die Sorgen groß, dass die intensive Zusammenarbeit, die ja bestanden hat, und die guten Beziehungen zerbrechen könnten. In einem Punkt sehe ich aktuell eine Ähnlichkeit äh, zwischen Großbritannien und der Schweiz. Denn hinter den außenpolitischen Haltungen gibt es innenpolitisch auch ganz andere Stimmen in diesen Ländern und eine Motivation, Klarheit über die Beziehungen mit der Europäischen Union schaffen zu wollen. In den letzten Wochen gab es zum Beispiel in der Schweiz mehrere Vorstöße und Denkanstöße, die die Blockade überwinden und Klarheit über die Beziehungen mit der Europäischen Union schaffen wollen. Vielleicht auch motiviert durch die desaströste Entwicklung im Vereinigten Königreich. Eine neue repräsentative Europa-Umfrage zeigt, dass die aktuelle außenpolitische Haltung der Schweiz in Sachen Rahmenabkommen bei den Schweizerinnen und Bürger, Bürgerinnen und Bürgern für Unzufriedenheit sorgt. Sie benennen stabile Beziehungen zu den Euro zur Europäischen Union als den wichtigsten und den gleichzeitig dringlichsten politischen Schwerpunkt. Und bei einer heutigen Abstimmung zum EWR-Beitritt würden wohl mehr als zwei Drittel der Wählerinnen und Wähler ein Ja in die Schweizer Urne legen. Auf so ein Ergebnis wären einige Mitgliedstaaten bei uns froh. Aber die Wahlen, die dieses Jahr in der Schweiz anstehen und die Europawahl im nächsten Jahr, könnten zu einer Verzögerung führen. Wir bitten Sie deswegen, 
ganz dringend, dieses, dieses Dossier eine hohe Priorität beizuräumen. Denn nur die europäische Integration Thank kann you. uns zusammen in Europa eine nötige Sicherheit bringen. Herzlichen Thank Dank. You. Member Mark Spike, you have the floor for one minute. Dear Mr. President, dear Mr. Vice President, thank you very much. All the political dossiers that have been covered so far have one thing in common. Regions and cities play an important role. So this assembly is not a vanity fair. It's an element of active subsidiarity to improve the quality of EU policy and EU legislation. And that's also true for the Fit for Future platform you mentioned and for the involvement of the, of the Red Job. And I think now the time is ripe to bring that to the next level because it's confined to existing legislation. But we have to improve the role of the CUR in a more strategic way. I mean, you have foresight in your title, and I think it's really important to bring in our expertise in a more forward-looking way when it comes to regulation and improving the EU policy-making work. So active subsidiarity, and that's the most important point, is not a policy of demarcation. It's a policy, policy for the mutual benefit of the EU Commission on the one side and the COR on the other side. Thank you very much. Thank you, Member Vincenzo Bianco. You have the floor for one minute. Presidente, desidero esprimere il mio apprezzamento più sincero per le valutazioni che abbiamo ascoltato eh, questa mattina. Eh, io credo che nelle regioni e nelle città possiamo svolgere un ruolo davvero decisivo anche in questa materia, eh, ma abbiamo bisogno di una stretta eh, sintonia non solo con i governi nazionali, ma con le eh, istituzioni dell'Unione Europea. Per questa ragione le riflessioni che lei ha condiviso con il Comitato eh, questa mattina sono particolarmente eh, positive. Ci sono alcune realtà anche nel sud dell'Europa, anche nella mia terra, la Sicilia, eh, che proprio in, in questo momento è in una condizione di grandi difficoltà per una emergenza ambientale. Abbiamo un allerta rosso di protezione civile con condizioni climatiche spaventose possiamo riuscire a svolgere un ruolo positivo Thank per affrontare you. e risolvere le questioni. Grazie, Presidente. Thank you, Member Una Power. You have the floor for one minute. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, transitioning speedily to green energy solutions is not only imperative from a climate standpoint, it's also a means for developing energy security. By developing our own renewable energy sources, we can move away from needing to seek out imports and leaving ourselves vulnerable to external shocks. But it's not merely energy transition that is needed, and I'm glad to hear Mr. Sekovic mention the need for energy efficiency across our union. Reducing energy waste must be a top priority, and this is something that LRAs have a huge role to play in. Regions and cities have the local knowledge and oversight to map out and implement retrofit projects of publicly owned buildings and support our citizens to reduce their own uh, energy needs. And this is something that we need to be supported on and worked with. Um, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, Member Markus Gleikmann, you have the floor for one minute. Vielen Dank, Herr Präsident. Die uh, diesjährigen Schwerpunktthemen waren sicherlich nicht schwierig auszuwählen, beschäftigen wir uns wahrscheinlich auf allen Ebenen mit den Folgen von Corona, den Auswirkungen des Krieges, insbesondere im Energiesektor und der hohen Inflation. Aus meiner Sicht fehlt noch die Ausbildungsstrategie für Fachkräfte, die Fit for 55 umsetzen sollen und der Fokus auf den Ausbau von grenzübergreifenden, intelligent gesteuerten Verteilnetzen, um auch die Speicherfrage nachhaltig anzugehen. An der Stelle möchte ich noch mal auf den Mitwirkungswille der Regionen und der Gebietskörperschaften hinweisen. Wir wollen konstruktive Subsidiarität. In den vergangenen Jahren haben wir uns in unserer Region intensiv mit Stellungnahmen am Diskussionsprozess des Arbeitsplanes beteiligt. Leider trägt die aktuelle Struktur des Umgangs mit solchen Stellungnahmen durch die Kommission nicht unbedingt zur Motivation bei, die umfangreiche Arbeit von Stellungnahmen zu intensivieren. Am Ende kommt es auf die Kommunen und Gebietskörperschaften an, die Ziele umzusetzen. Dies muss sich auch stärker im Diskussionsprozess zwischen den Institutionen abbilden. Vielen Dank. 
Member Josko Klizovic, you have the floor for one minute. Thank you. It is undisputable that energy is at the heart of our progress, our development, and all the crises we are addressing these days. And today, with skyrocketing prices, uh, the energy is neither affordable nor accessible for everyone. In my city, for example, uh, the electricity is used uh, by tramways as a popular means of transport has risen 16 times, from 5 to 8 million euros. The situation is not much different in schools, kindergartens, and city hospitals. The situation threatens to disrupt public services provided by local authorities, and that must not happen. Thus, this situation uh, demands concerted action of the EU, national governments, and local authorities to manage it, which in concrete terms means an increase of local authorities' involvement in national and EU policy development. Local authorities must be at the heart of the energy market structural reforms planned in 2023. Uh, with mandatory consultation mechanisms, such as multi-level climate and energy dialogues. Local authorities should be granted a direct access to funds and technical assistance for improving energy efficiency and boosting renewables. Thank you. Thank you. Member Ratislav Trinka, you have the floor for one minute. Thank you very much, Mr. President of the European Commission, Mr. President, dear colleagues. As we know, the energy crisis affects all the regions and the right has become a priority for European structures. Náš kraj sa usiluje byť obozretný hospodára, preto začal aktivity v oblasti vodika už dávno pred krízou. Ako prvá samozpráva na Slovensku sme priniesli vlastnú vodikovú stratégiu a súčasné dianie vo svete len potvrdzuje, že sme sa nemohli vydať lepšou cestou. Ako dúfame, na Ukrajine bude čoskoro prebiehať povojnová obnova aj energetických systémov. Košický kraj, ktorý hraničí priamo s Ukrajinou, je pripravený by prírodzeným pilierom mosta, ktorý bude spájať a podporovať spoluprácu na obnoviteľnej energii medzi Európskou úniou a Ukrajinou. Kraje vedia cieľ, vedia cestu a preto potrebujú podporu z hora. Preto vás chcem podporiť, pán podpredseda Európskej komisie, aby ste to do čo možno najväčšej miery zabezpečili a aby regióny mali čo najrychlejšiu cestu k týmto zdrojom. Isilda Gomes tem a palavra por um minuto. Muito obrigada, Sr. Presidente. Apenas para dizer duas breves palavras e dizer, reforçar o papel que temos desempenhado ao longo, nomeadamente da crise do Covid, as cidades e as regiões. Já provámos que somos capazes de fazer bem e de fazer melhor. É preciso também aprendermos com as boas experiências que há ao nível da Europa. Por isso, eu acho que devia haver uma forma de partilharmos essas experiências, porque, como se costuma dizer, a roda já foi inventada e nós poderíamos também aproveitar dessas boas experiências a nível da Europa para também nós, localmente e regionalmente, podermos aplicá-las. Por isso, este é também um desafio de podermos trazer ao conhecimento do Comitê das Regiões e, naturalmente, de todos os, os comissários, aquilo que de bom se faz em cada uma das nossas regiões. Penso que será uma grande mais-valia. Muito obrigada. Muito obrigado. Member Josef Ribani, you have the floor for one minute. Köszönöm szépen, elnök úr. Tisztelt biztos úr, szeretném felhívni a bizottság figyelmét a geotermia használatára. A geotermia lokális energia, a legkiválóbb lehetőség az önkormányzatok számára. Ugyanis a geotermia esetében a kitermelés, a fogyasztás és a tárolás egy helyben történik. A geotermia hőlépcsőit figyelembe véve alkalmas elektromos áramtermelése, távfűtése és mezőgazdasági használatra. Ha a kitermel termál víz felhasználás után visszasajtolásra kerül, akkor elmondhatjuk a geotermia tisztább energia bármelyik megújuló energiaforrásnál hiszen a kiaknázásához szükséges eszközök legyártása, avulás utáni megsemmisítése és újrahasznosítása a legkisebb környezeti szennyezéssel jár, szemben a napelemekkel, szélkerekekkel. Ezért kérem biztos urat, hogy a geotermia használatáról dolgozzon ki irányelvet a bizottság. Köszönöm szépen. Thank you. This concludes our request for the floor. Now I will give the floor to uh, Vice President 
Sefcovic for final remarks. You have the floor for 10 minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, President. And I really would like to thank you for your statements, for your interventions, for your, for your questions. And I will, I will try to respond uh, to the best of my uh, abilities. Uh, Madame uh, uh, Drenan, in uh, uh, highlighting the importance of the European cooperation in the field of energy and to kind of be inspired by the good uh, European approach uh, uh, in the COVID crisis and especially common purchase of, uh, uh, of uh, vaccines. And she was highlighting how important role uh, by the cities and municipalities was played in all the crises we went through over the last uh, two, three years. And, and I just really would like to reassure you that it's very much appreciated. I mean, we know about it, um, maybe not always uh, we expressed it in, uh, in, 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 in verbatim, but we know that without uh, mayors, without governors, uh, without uh, local knowledge, uh, simply Europe would not function. And, and I would say also the, the program of uh, uh, session of the Committee of Regions and the attendance of all my colleagues, commissioners, uh, in uh, the discussions here is just reflection of how much we appreciate to cooperate with you. I know that uh, we are now discussing with Mr. President and uh, Secretary General what we can do to have our cooperation more efficient, uh, uh, more, more pragmatic. I think that was also the point made by Mr. Gleichmann. And uh, um, we will be looking into the ways uh, how to make it uh, more practical, more useful for you, for us, so we would feel uh, the better feedback and uh, you will have uh, also uh, the access uh, to uh, the processes uh, uh, which, are, uh, which are very often and uh, uh, under huge time pressure <laughs> being executed right now because it was very much driven by, by the, I would say, perma crisis uh, we go through right now in, in, in the EU. To Mr. Murphy, thank you very much for your kind words. Indeed, uh, real life uh, uh, concerns uh, uh, of the people in, in the Northern Ireland are very, uh, very high on our minds. Um, as you know, I recognize publicly that uh, uh, there are unintended uh, consequences of the protocol on Ireland and Northern Ireland, but we can solve them only jointly, jointly with our UK partners, uh, because this is what will give to the people in Northern Ireland pre predictability, stability to give them uh, legal certainty, and I'm sure it would, it would open new doors uh, for the investors who would like to benefit from the fact that Northern Ireland would be a unique place in the world with having access uh, to, to both uh, very important uh, internal markets. That one of the UK, and of course, that one of the uh, European uh, Union. And uh, uh, when I was talking to the leaders uh, in Northern Ireland, I think we, we shared with all of them, uh, I would say, my proposition uh, to them that if you look at 25 years of the Good Friday Belfast Agreement, we very much appreciate uh, that it was about the peace. But I think that the next 25 years could be not only about the peace, but it should be also about the prosperity. And I think that if you manage to solve the issues which are uh, on the table jointly in a good spirit, uh, uh, and trustful relationship uh, uh, between EU and UK. I think we will deliver for all communities in Northern Ireland and we'll open this new chapter of uh, influx of uh, investments from US, from Canada, from, from European Union. And I think the people in the Northern Ireland would be first uh, to uh, benefit. To Madame Rees, uh, you're absolutely right. If it comes to critical uh, uh, raw materials, and I think that the recent uh, developments and the fact uh, that we are paying such a high price for our dependency on one major supplier of the fossil fuels who on top of it is very hostile uh, to Europe, uh, I'm talking here about Russia, should be a reminder that we should never ever be in the same situation if it comes uh, to the autonomous uh, action uh, of Europe. Dependency is expensive, dependency is dangerous, and everything in these days, unfortunately, can be weaponized. We see it with energy, and we, we can see it with uh, uh, critical raw materials. Therefore, uh, we are preparing this act on critical raw materials, where we want to make sure that we would explore all the <clears throat> sources of the critical raw materials we have in, in Europe, what we have in our neighborhood, uh, what we can develop together with our friends in Western Balkans, in, in, in Ukraine, uh, uh, on... Um, uh, Greenland, what we can do in a partnership-like uh, relationship uh, 
with the uh, countries with the same values as we have, like Canada, like Australia, but also to be ready to go uh, to the further uh, distances when it would be necessary, just to make sure that we would have diversified supply of the critical raw materials to Europe. Your role would be absolutely crucial in uh, the situations where uh, we discover that we have critical raw materials in Europe to help us to work with the public opinion because you are uh, those who are trusted the most, you are on the ground, you have the major impact on the public opinion, and uh, we have to find the ways together how to move from the approach which is very often linked uh, with the critical raw materials and the bad name mining has in Europe, uh, how to move it from not in my neighborhood, this famous NIMBY, to what I was told once by a very agile NGO, into PIMBY, please, in my neighborhood. Of course, it's much easier to say to be done. It has to be clear that there should be absolutely uh, uh, highest uh, of the environmental standards, that it should be uh, benefit sharing with the, with the local, uh, uh, local population, and that we simply have to respect the rules that we would avoid these negative stories of the past, where very often, when I talk to local uh, population, is telling us, we do not want this again, that somebody extract the materials, leave the mess, file for bankruptcy and, and leave us with all the, all the environmental damage and we have to uh, face the consequences. We have to avoid it, but we need to explore every possible uh, critical raw material source we have in Europe and do it in a European uh, sustainable uh, way. If it comes to Mr. Ansinch, and um, I think uh, uh, together with uh, Mrs. Power, they've been, uh, they've been highlighting the importance on energy efficiency. You're absolutely right. Energy saved is the cleanest energy we can get. And therefore, from the next generation EU, we devoted such a huge uh, volumes of financial support uh, for energy efficiency. Uh, paradoxically, here the issue is not financing, but permitting and labor shortage uh, 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 and the skills in making sure that we would have enough workers who could put the photovoltaic panels on the roof, who could use uh, uh, and install uh, the, uh, the, uh, the pumps uh, uh, which we need, or to use all new modern technologies to make sure that we would uh, use as little energy as uh, necessary and to push uh, the efficiencies to the high level. Mr. Vlasak was referring to the security uh, of supply. Uh, indeed, uh, uh, now I think we see that we need every single source of energy, therefore the respect uh, for uh, energy mix uh, to be a sovereign decision of every member state. Uh, it's not only enshrined uh, in the treaties, uh, but it's exercised by all uh, governments. Uh, and I think it was also reflected uh, in our taxonomy uh, decisions. And we need uh, to make sure that we would use uh, all low carbon energy sources we can get because uh, uh, not only climate change, but also the weaponization of energy supplies is, is very much uh, uh, present uh, in our uh, period, unfortunately. Uh, uh, to Mr. Frag, if it comes to, to Switzerland, indeed here we, our interest is very clear. We want to have the best possible relationship uh, with Switzerland. Switzerland is a, is a country um, which has the same uh, value-based system. It's uh, in the heart of Europe. And we just need uh, to resolve the structural issues which have been kind of accumulating over the last few years. Uh, we want to make sure that if it comes to the uh, law, uh, EU law, which is applicable to the single market, that it will be uniformly uh, applied, that uh, there will be understanding that if the law upgrades, it should be uh, dynamically <coughs> allied uh, uh, everywhere, uh, that we should develop the dispute settlement mechanisms if we do not understand each other. It's very clear legal pathways, uh, how to resolve it. And of course, uh, in uh, these days where we see that a lot of uh, industries, because of the crisis we went through, being very much relying upon the state aid, uh, we have to have also good understanding how the state aid mechanisms are, are working all over uh, Europe. And then, of course, uh, contribution to the cohesion uh, uh, of the European Union is also a very important aspect for us. We are talking about all these issues. We are having a number of exploratory talks. We hope uh, that at the end of these exploratory talks, uh, we will have a very good understanding on both sides uh, what is achievable. And uh, uh, once there will be this critical mass of understanding on the table, I hope uh, we, can, we can relaunch uh, uh, our, uh, our negotiations. And I agree with you, 
that the best thing would be to use this year because next year will be year of transition. And I think that uh, we should consolidate the European political and economic space uh, and work with our friends as closely as uh, uh, possible. Mr. Speich was referring to the foresight, fit for future platform, reg hub contribution, extremely welcome. And they, 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 they are uh, um, very, very helpful in our policy making, in our legislative uh, work. And I think that we can do more indeed uh, in a foresight area. And you can help us as you did in the past uh, with your approach, what we can do to accelerate the permitting for renewables, uh, for strategic projects, what we can do together to make sure that it would not take us years and years and years to get the permit, because this is one of the issues which is, uh, which is uh, uh, which might push investments in other direction. And we need the investments in Europe, in your municipalities, in your cities, in your regions, and we need to do it in a joint way. I think that uh, uh, Mr. Klisovic, uh, Mr. Tunka, Ms., uh, uh, Mrs. Pavard, they've been referring to the high energy prices, to the energy mix, and I agree with you that the fact that we had the system which was working for years quite well, were, to put it in a simple terms, uh, the price of electricity uh, was calculated uh, like uh, twice uh, the price of gas plus the cost of uh, uh, emission uh, allowance simply pushed the electricity prices through the roof last year. And therefore, we realized that also our energy mix is totally different than it was uh, many years ago. I mean, we have a much stronger proportion of uh, renewables. We have a stronger proportion of low carbon energy in our mix. And therefore, we are fully conscious that we need to develop new rules uh, uh, for trading of uh, electricity uh, to make sure that prices would be lower, would be, uh, would, be, uh, would be acceptable for our population, for our businesses. And we will be coming with the new proposals in the first quarter, uh, in the first quarter of, this, uh, of this year. Uh, if you allow me to, uh, to conclude in uh, Slovak, I would like uh, by som sa chcel poďakovať pánovi Trnkovi a takisto aj uh, východoslovenskému vyššiemu územnú cel, uh, za to, akým spôsobom sa uh, postavili Košice a, a Košický kraj nielen k vodíkovej stratégii, kde skutočne zohrávajú um, mimoriadne dôležitú úlohu, lebo sú prví uh, v tomto úsilí a v tomto smerovaní tohto veľmi moderného odvetia ekonomiky, ale aj za tú úlohu, ktorú zohrávali podobne ako všetky kraničné kraje na hranici s Ukrajinou, kde boli vlastne prvými, ktorí museli reagovať na utečenskú vlnu z Ukrajiny a že sa to zvládlo s takým nasadením a s takými pozitívnymi výsledkami a naozaj aj z úrovne Európskej komisie sa chcem za to veľmi pekne poďakovať. Mr. President, back to English once again. Thank you very much for your kind invitation. Uh, for having the opportunity to address you such a busy day in, in, in Brussels, for hearing your supportive messages, uh, uh, appreciating our close cooperation. And uh, uh, I can only tell you that uh, my colleagues in the college, myself, our president, very much appreciate uh, uh, the role of the uh, Committee of Regions and looking forward to our even closer cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. We're the ones who thank you for in such a busy day for taking the time to be with us and uh, to share your views in such important issues uh, like the Commission uh, work program and uh, all the related aspects that were mentioned during this debate. Please believe that the Committee of the Regions is ready and eager to strengthen the cooperation uh, at all levels with the European uh, Commission and, of course, with you in uh, specifics, um, because we think we can, we can bring added value to the work that the European Commission does to the European project as a whole. Not only with our insights, what comes from the regional and local experience, but also 
to bring the work of the European Commission and of Europe to the local and regional communities that we all serve. Sir, thank you so much for taking the time. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.